good morning it's a beautiful sunny day it always makes me so happy i was gonna say spring's kind of here but we've definitely had some snow <laughs> this week so maybe not quite but it's this feeling it is trying i'm looking out on the magnolia we've got a semi nice day planned we've got a family day that really hits different now that we have teddy and like soaking up those days is just so lovely but he is downstairs with ollie in our bedroom at the moment so i've come upstairs because he has taken over our room we've got his cot we've got a changing table in there now his like rocking chair his bath stuff is always in our bath like he has a bath at least every few nights and I don't remember the last time that I've had a bath now um, but I do love it like life is very centered around him at the moment and with that we're not sure whether we're going to do a national trust or a beach but we're attempting to find somewhere with a cafe because we really want to sit down and discuss renovation plans for 2024 it's something that we've been trying to do for a little while a few things have changed and it does change our ideas as to what we're going to be doing, whether we can achieve those this year or next year. So we'll hopefully try and update you on those, but really ready to get back into it. I think more than ever as well with Teddy, it's infused me again to um, push forward with the house like, and make it more into a family home. Although I'm still not quite sure how we'll do the renovations. But anyway, I wanted to show you some clothes this morning. You guys know I'm like trying to find myself a little bit um, postpartum and actually I'm really enjoying it. Like I don't mind my new body, I don't mind the new me, um, but obviously it's it's a bit of a change and I've got some bits in from Borford and Blake who I'm working with today. Um, you may have like seen me wear some of their clothes before. Ollie actually wears a load of their bits, uh, they also do menswear. Some of his items, you'll have seen him wear on repeat, but I'll show you some of those in a bit too. And they just do the most like timeless, classic, kind of like I say like British clothing. One of which this season, like this is my absolute fave. You guys know that I am a big, big ruffle fan and this shirt absolutely hitting the nail on the head with like the linen and the blue and white vibes too and um, but yeah i'll pop you on the tripod i am a bit different with sizing at the moment and um so i'd probably say the majority of them are size 12 but i will link below what my sizes are and try and let you know like if the sizings come up a little bit big or a little bit small yeah and then we'll head out for the day it is so nice right now if you're like not 100 percent confident in your body um i really feel like a few new items of clothing just totally lifts my spirits and having something that's comfortable that i can kind of like my body can change with a little bit it's so important for me and i really feel like Wolf and blake clothing like hits that tick box for me basically like practical everyday clothes which really look nice feel soft durable wash well all of that lovely stuff can you see yes this really does feel like the old me up here a little bit it's quite lovely so this one is 100 percent linen and as i said it's got the like really like feminine kind of romantic um details here on the collar and then also on the cuff and it's got a really fine stripe which you can see a little bit more there kind of like white and baby blue the details are just absolutely gorgeous and i tend to find items that have a ruffle just like elevate an outfit really easily and for me they go perfectly if you're wanting to wear a little jumper which still with this weather you might want to layer it a little bit even um, more of a vest that doesn't have any sleeves these go really gorgeously with those and i have it tucked in at the moment but i'll show you after i've shown you the jeans um, you could also have it a little bit baggy if you wanted to which is how i often wear it if i have like a jumper over the top too and then i've also got their mum jeans on which let me tell you jeans postpartum are probably the hardest thing and these are really soft they've got like a nice feel to them where they're like not too stretchy so they're hopefully going to hold their shape quite well but also are like stretchy enough that they're still quite comfortable but i think that's like more in the softness anyway they're nice and high-waisted fit gorgeously got like lovely big pockets around the bum i've got a belt on them at the moment and i've also got them can you see rolled up there a little bit too and i believe that i got these in a size 12 at the moment and if i whoop, well i'm showing you too much <laughs> show you there without the shirt tucked in and then you can see it's going to be a bit creased because it is 100 percent linen the shirt also down fully below it as well it is so 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 nice to have some jeans to wear i didn't actually appreciate i thought i was like i am quite a dress girl but i didn't appreciate still how much often i wear jeans and i've got another pair to show you which i think i'm going to be wearing on repeat very much loving their linen shirts because i may have another one but this one's quite a different style this is like this really classic shirt style linen again and in the most gorgeous color navy 
I don't even know how to describe this navy, but it is beautiful. Like the color is just stunning. And I know that sounds strange, but I'm gonna say it with the jeans too. There's just like certain shades that like look a little bit more expensive. And I feel like this shirt does that. It's like more of a like royally navy blue. And for some reason, I just think that that elevates it. Um, the cuffs, really gorgeous. They've got this little print going over them too. If it will focus, there you go. Um, and I've just got them rolled up slightly there. But I love that they've got quite a white button on them, specifically with these white jeans. And what I was gonna say about these, which I think you guys may think that I'm um, going to Lulu, but <laughs> I've tried a lot of white jeans, whitey cream jeans, um, and I love the color tone. But some of them just don't go right. They're looking quite white on camera here. They're a really nice shade. They're not too white, that whitey white that can look quite cheap. Um, but they're also not too like yellowy cream. <laughs> just like that perfect in between where they're like soft, a nice soft white, I'd say, like on the creamier, softer white um, side. Yeah, I know. They're the things that I care about though. Uh, again, these fit really, really beautifully. And in fact, I'd say as white, Trousers go really flattering. Let me show you them in full. Similar styles to the others, quite high waisted. I've got them rolled on the bottom again. Pretty flattering on the bum, specifically with my granny pants that I'm still wearing. Uh, yeah, just, just feels so, so comfortable in them. And of course, again, you could have this one kind of like tucked in. Sorry, showing so much of my tummy, but you can have this one tucked in, but equally have it quite loose, I really do like these shirts, a little bit more effortless and loose with the trousers there. And I'm gonna keep these ones on, show you one more shirt <laughs> that I've got a dress. Clearly really loving shirts at the moment, but I do feel like they're so easy to have in the wardrobe and everybody has to have a few shirts, different colors, different variations. This one is in a gingham cotton, so not linen this time, but a really lovely, soft, lightweight fabric that would be perfect for like, well into the warmer summer months too and gingham which is just one of my favorites it's a really like soft palette as well i think it's quite flattering the color that it's got on it it's more of like a warm i say like kind of like a toffee um caramelly kind of color with a white again quite like feminine um i have it untucked with the white jeans on at the moment but of course i'm gonna do this really slap dash now but this one i have on in a size large as well as i say the navy one i also had in a size large but I'd probably say if you want to have them tucking in, I've sized up because I do quite like them loose and um, like flowing out. But if you like to tuck them in, I'd probably say like stay true to your size. So that for me usually would be a small to medium. And then of course I couldn't not show you a dress as well with a gorgeous like puff sleeve. I love these little sleeves. Ties in at the waist as well. This sounds like little Otto coming up the stairs to see us. Hi boy. What do you think? He's just waiting for Wolf and Blake to do him a little bandana too. Hey. Oh, cuddles. Oh, this boy. Love you. Lost my train of thought now, but in the most gorgeous blue and white, fresh vibes. Let me show you the bottom. So it's not a really long mini dress. In fact, I think it's just a really nice length. That's quite a flattering length. Not too long, um, but equally like kind of like just below the knee kind of area. I'm literally always surrounded by one of my boys causing mischief. I think I can hear Ollie showering downstairs now. It's probably why Otto's come in. He's been doing a little bit of DIY with the boys. <laughs> um, and I think I'm gonna get back into my jeans. It's looking like it's gonna cloud over, but yes, let's go find the boys. Getting out the house with the baby, quite the task. Quite the task, we've got things everywhere. He always looks very cutely dressed. Dad always makes an effort, and I feel like mum is always the one who um, doesn't bring the outfit. I make an effort though, so I wear the same thing on repeat. Yeah, Ollie actually has, um, this is a Borford and Blake jumper that he has, and it's slightly different, this one's wool, but he actually has it in <laughs> navy. Navy jersey type material as well. And he's got two of them, because he wouldn't stop wearing them, literally. Um, so he's now got a camera one too, which is pretty chuffed about. If your men love a jumper like this, then would recommend. They're so easy. Did you size up in that one? No, this was just large. No, like, normally I'm a large in sort of like jumpers and things. Yeah. But they're just like, they're so easy, aren't they? You can dress them up, you can dress them down. <laughs> Come on then, happy boy. Let's go for a walk, shall we? Yeah. He's got a cute matching hat too. 
um, with little bear ears. We'll show you when we get out because he's refusing to put it on right now. <laughs> even sure what you can see it was packed at the beach we actually drove around the car park like 10 times missing a space every time <laughs> we were so unlucky but we, we kept our cool we've been for a really lovely walk we all had an ice cream and discussed the plans we think we've made a plan of action we actually agree on it don't, don't we all what? like plan of action for the house yeah we, we agree we agreed on everything yeah which actually well, well we usually agree until you figure out what my plans are for the yeah. yeah, we've always had disagreements on the shed. Um, we were just having Ted's having a feed before we head back. Um, a day's gone so quickly, to be honest. This always happens, doesn't it? Like just getting anywhere and doing anything with a babe, pretty slow. Um, and a dog. And a dog. But the sun has shone the whole time, which is quite unusual for at the moment. And yeah. We'll let you know. Maybe tomorrow, though, we'll have to let you know the plans because tonight, by the time that we get home, we'll probably have some dinner, do the bath, bedtime routine. Yeah, <laughs> the day goes. Welcome to Laura and Ollie Car Chats. We thought we'd take this opportunity whilst Teddy is hopefully sleeping. Um, we've even got Otto down here, so if you hear panting, it's not Ollie, it's Otto down there. Um, yeah, and we wanted to catch you up on the extension because it has paused, but not just because of Teddy, because we're moving. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, I don't think we're going to be moving for a long time, but moving was the big reason why actually our neighbours put the house on art for sale. And at that point, we just decided to stop. And this is why. The neighbours that put the house up for sale are on the side that we had those lovely, wonderful windows. So that was like our neighbouring wall, but it looked into our alleyway. And those windows went into their kitchen. So the history of it is that three of that, all three houses, so ours and both neighbours, were all owned by the same chap. Mm. Um, ours and our neighbours to not the alley side um, were used as lodging houses. So if you're a really old subscriber, you'll remember when we gutted the hallway, yeah. there was like a weird little cupboard, we pulled that out, there was a bit of wall behind it and we were almost going to break through until we realised that actually that was heading <laughs> straight into, into their living room. Yes, um, it's where our mirror currently sits in the hallway. So it's basically a doorway into our next door neighbour's house. Yeah, so there was a lot of things that got changed with those three houses that probably didn't get planning permission and maybe weren't done completely correctly. Um, that you wouldn't see very many houses of that kind that would have windows like that that looked kind of directly into somebody else's house. We do have them on the um, upper floors. But they're, they're like a frosted textured glass and they yeah. don't open. The ones on the alley actually open. Um, and that was definitely something that the builders and the architects were raising their eyebrows up saying like you 100% wouldn't be allowed to have that nowadays or, or like the fire safety risks and stuff like that so anyway it was just this like a little bit of a headache it it seemed like we were having to go down a lot of like rabbit holes to try and figure out how we were going to do the extension with those windows there even if we didn't do a full return they were kind of like not the most beautiful thing to look out on if we had like fully renovated our house and i know you always get that but it felt like at every point that we were getting to it was such a compromise there, there were other bits as well there was like the um the underpinning uh, if we took it up to the wall the builders were saying we, we're gonna have to have a good budget for underpinning um possibly which was like not ideal and it's, it's gonna add a fair bit to the to the cost um but generally that is why the extension paused because we wanted a little bit more freedom with the extension if possible and we didn't know what the new people coming in um, might want to do um, our hope upon hope was that they might also want to do an extension and would be favorable to us doing one and funny enough the first time that Ollie met our new next-door neighbors I was like is somebody looking out for us like is this fate like what is going and on we hadn't we hadn't we seen them going in and out of the house we hadn't actually spoken to them and then I was walking out one day and he was walking out, tidying the front garden area. And I was like, oh, hi, like 
made an introduction, we're having a chat for a little while, and then without prompting anything, he was just saying like, oh yeah, those windows, they're a bit odd. If you order an extension, you can block them up if you want. <laughs> um, and by the way, we would like to do an extension in a couple of years time. So we're like, amazing, perfect. We can... Literally couldn't have like answered our dreams more, could yeah. it? It, so, like timing, fate, whatever it may have been, it was so worth the wait for us, wasn't it? Yeah, and the way it works in the UK is that if we build, if we build up to a neighbour's wall, we have to get a party wall agreement, which basically says that we're we're all happy with how it's being done. Um, you can't stop it happening, but you can make it go slower and more expensive. So our new neighbours have sounded agreeable to. Um, us yeah. walking over, so that means it should go through smoothly and at little or no cost. Um, and then the other bit is when they come to do their extension, technically they have to pay us to make use of the wall that we would have built. So there's always that kind of toing and froing where like they're probably being quite happy with us right now and hope that when they do their extension, will be really accommodating with how they connect onto our extension wall. Um, yeah. Which yeah, it, it's all kind of like give and take yes so now we're kind of like a little bit back to the drawing board because of that but in a much more positive um stance because we now have a little bit more freedom on the design that we might go for and we think that we're going to go back full circle to a full width side return extension another reason for this is because the neighbours who have moved in next to us wanted a side return. Um, another house came up and they want a side return and it just seems like um, a very desirable thing to do for these houses. So as much as we think it's going to be a forever long term home, we also think that probably for like selling it on in the future if we do want to. It's like the crowd pleasing choice. Yeah. I think our option that we had designed would have worked brilliantly. Um, and I think it, anybody... It was a compromise. It was a it was compromise a... because of those windows. And also, going back on that a little bit, that design and the full width design. I don't remember if we said this at the time because we didn't know like how... It's so hard to know how much to say online as also. But the quotes that we got, a lot of the builders were saying, why don't you just do a side return? It's going to be cheaper and easier. Because the design that we were looking at, they were going to have to be doing like precise angles and like getting everything straight. A side return is just like built to the wall, done yeah. and dusted. It's what they do every day, so it will be easier for them. Well, so. we'll see. I'm sure we'll get into it and it won't quite be. It'll be like, oh, there's just cobwebs holding your house together <laughs> down here. <laughs> no doubt. It is but... just dirt, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is. Oh, is he waking? Hopefully not. That is what we're now going back to do with the extension. Because of that, we are now pausing, but not like pausing, but we're going because we're going back to plans and we haven't put in um, planning permission. We um, are thinking or hoping to do spring 2025 for the extension. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I mean, I mean, yeah. we did make the original plan for when we're going to do it. Then we had a baby and now the plans have changed. So I feel like the slippage was justified. But like, it really should happen next year, spring. Yes. But we do need to get around and book a builder in because they still have a really long lead time. But anyway, we still have a lot to get done within that time. Considering we're now in April, we've got to get cracking. Before the extension, we absolutely have to get that attic done that we have been putting off <laughs> for five years. We need to get our storage up into the attic. And that is a priority before it gets too hot because if summer hits and we haven't done it... Oh, it's not, we're just not going to do it. That attic will then get pushed to... It's so hot up there. Yeah, we're yeah. only going to have ourselves to blame. And then the back area, which is currently bedroom, bathroom, which you guys probably know we want to switch when we last talked about our like renovation plans. We want to gut that and get it semi back. So it will be like windows, first fix, electrics, plumbing, walls up. But we can't get it to the plastering and bits in because that is above where the extension will be knocked down and steels will be put in. So there'll be a lot of movement. All the tiles, if we put that in, would have just cracked. So just not going to touch any of that bit. Yeah, but we do want to get it ready. And then the fall down says by next spring, we need to have planned and done. We start the chimney. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's part of the gutting of the back bit, but the, it is a big project yeah. of that. Chimney's got to come all the way down through to beneath the floorboards of the uh, bathroom green room area. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the chimney rest get taken down when we actually do the extension. 
um, but then also that bit's got to be re-roofed. So. Yeah, that does mean like scaffolding, roofing. That that's a pretty big yeah, bit. that's a pretty major one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the biggest bit of the whole thing. Yeah. So back to planning the downstairs. So we'll, I want before the extension starts, it'll probably be the first project that we actually do a huge plan, and we have like flooring, kitchen, tiles, grout, every detail, everything picked paint, and planned beforehand. Picked and planned, and then Ollie's favourite potentially Ooh, yeah this one's like a real stretch goal it depends what the budget comes back from the builders on with the new sort of revised simpler plan but um if there's enough time i'd really love to get them to redo the shed um it's an old like the original part of the shed from when the house was built and then there's been additions and alterations the roof kind of comes into a valley in the middle which all gets filled up with leaves and it just floods. Um, so when it rains heavily, I have to run down to the shed and put little polythene sheets like over the tools. Honestly, how we've lost five years with the renovation and like that kind of bodged together shed is unbelievable. But it'll be nice to finally get that into like it's honestly not even really like a feasible shed right now. Like I think a lot of people would say it's for the things that it has in it, which is some semi expensive. DIY yeah, tools, tools down there. it's very leaky. Yeah, it panics me every time we have a storm because the, the roofing sheet is just like that super thin, cheap, corrugated plastic that yeah. if you like put a broom up, you'll just smash a hole through it. Um, but we have differing ideas on this shed. Ollie wants to take up a bit more of the garden. I think it's big Should enough already. Them? Right. Give us your opinions. So this is. I this said is, that we wouldn't natter in this, and here I we go. I think this is quite important, though. So, okay. our garden is very long, but it's very thin. Mm. So, if you separate it into what I think is like a nice square-ish shape, where like you could have a barbecue, mm. but if you if you filled the area in a really long way, like the person at the other end of the barbecue or the table would be so far away you can't talk to them. So like your area that you actually do an activity in yeah, like you has to be quite in the garden. contained. Yeah. So if you come out the extension, you're going to have like a little patio area, then a little grass area, then maybe like another kind of like patio area down towards the bottom and then the shed. And you could maybe make that grass area a little bit bigger, but I think once you get it to a certain length, that like is enough for like kids to run around in and have like a little play. There's no point in going much longer. So I feel that because we don't have a garage, we would do so much better to have more storage. So I feel like the shed could basically be definitely 50% larger. It could possibly be 100% larger. Let's put up here, because I don't know what it is right now. Let's put up here the square footage of the current shed. Because I've got a little planet. I've got a plan somewhere. Yeah, current shed, because I think you'll be surprised at what the square footage currently is for the shed. It's it's a pretty big area. I think once it's knocked down and it's all like open planned and you know, done in a bit of a better floor plan, you may not feel the same way because I think we've got a kid now. Like what if we want like a vegetable patch and a play area and a dining area and a sitting area? He's he's gonna have someone to put his bike. If he has a sibling, they're going to want someone to put a bike. You're going to want to get your bike out so that we can all go for bicycle rides. They might want like beach Let's things. Let's be honest, it's just a man cave anyway. I feel like this is going to be a very 50-50 split between people who want and like a big garden and then like the storage lovers. I'm a storage lover, but I just don't think we need it. Anyway, we've digressed there a lot on the shed, which you can probably see that we don't particularly agree on. <laughs> the one thing forever that we just don't agree on um but yeah we're pretty excited actually about this next stage um it's yeah. feeling like now the extension is a lot more attainable um i don't know if we quite portrayed that it wasn't before but it just wasn't happening was it no i like was saying at the beginning there was those difficulties that we were trying to get through and it was just hard to, to find solutions to get through them now it just feels so simple we know exactly yeah. how it's going to go we just need to get it done and also it's been quite nice having teddy we have 
fully decided that we do want that side return and we want it to be open plan because we love the idea of just being able to like shout from one end of the house <laughs> to the other and be able to hear each other and it's going to be a long time for us until we have those like teenage kids that want to be separated in rooms and we've both said when we were that age we you would just go to your bedroom so you know yeah um, but I'm going to make them stay with us as long as they can. We still have like a bit of a multi-purpose room like in that plan so we can keep them kind of like close if they want to but not super close. Yeah. So I think it worked really well. Yeah. But we'll let you know when we have any other updates. Hopefully soon. We need to get cracking on it. Um, for now, I think we're going to enjoy this. Poor Otto's pup cup looks like it has disintegrated pretty Melted. much. Oh no. Oh, no. It's still that half there. Good. Yeah, I'm going to give them pet? this. We're going to enjoy a treat and hopefully have a minute piece. Oh, do they know he's still in a, in a bag? Oh yeah, Otto's in his poor guy. He's in his little sleepy bag. He's because... in his straight jacket. Actually, somebody, somebody commented on my video the other day, is the dog in a bag? Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Because we haven't got a crate for him right now and he likes to um, scratch things. So. Um, scratch things, he actually ate through his crate and then ate my seat belt as well. So. That's why he's in a straight <laughs> That's why you're contained in it. <laughs> For the moment, until we come up with something a bit better, hey bud? Anyway, I'll probably catch you maybe another day before I sign off this video because we are off um, to see family today. Um, yeah, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Just checking how messy it is in the background of the shot. I think I'm thankfully blocking most of it. Um, I've just had like a little influx of packages actually because we are going away for our first night away with the baby actually two nights in London I have no idea how it's gonna go I have no idea what I'm taking but there are a few things we like bought a good few things before we had Teddy but there were also things that we just never got around to doing number one was a change bag um, I was just using an app to e-file like you just don't need really a, a change bag change bag um, I was using a lawn chomp bag for such a long time um, but I did want like a stroller pram organizer so this is one that goes onto the straps of the pram so that you can still have the storage underneath for other things which I think might be useful if we're like traveling or away and because I'm breastfeeding like I don't feel like I need like we're not having to take bottles or formula and stuff with us on the go so I don't feel like we always need like a lot of stuff and mostly just nappies spare change of clothes do you guys take two spare changes of clothes or one that's one thing that I'm very confused on I guess it depends on how long you're going to be out for um what else have we got this little attachment for this is his favorite bouncer actually I think I might go through some um things I haven't like talked that much baby and like baby products well since being pregnant or having him teether we're going to be getting to that stage pretty soon and then I always find this hilarious I thought being a mum I'd start to know what like sizes kids need especially your own it's still impossible like I'm I'm none the wiser now that I've actually had the baby cardigans I think are the best thing Jumpers are much harder. Cardigans we use all of the time, especially for the time that he was born, I think we're still into spring, summer. So easy to put on and off, depending on the temperature. Anyway, the reason that I was saying it is, is these are both three to six. And like, I don't know if you can kind of tell so much there, but they are so different size-wise, so different. But I'm gonna round this one off here. Um, Borford and Blake have very kindly offered a 15% off discount, which I'm gonna put on code here and also put in the description. I'm gonna have all of the links below for everything. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.